Hello, dear educators. My name is Julie Demi. I'm a Cambridge Certified English teacher and a teacher trainer. In this session, we are going to talk about a really important thing, professional development, and what it stands for, how to choose and how to plan it. So, if you're interested, welcome. Let's get started. Today's teachers should be experts in different fields. Planning and assessing the lessons, self-reflection, evaluating the results of the lessons, planning the sessions based on the previous experience, understanding the students' needs and evaluating them, being adaptable and flexible to the needs of the students and the environment, creating the environment in the classroom for better learning, enhancing the learning process, being an emotionally stable person and many other things that should be in the classroom. Communicating, managing, and I can continue this list over and over. I think that there is no end to it. And it means that we need to develop our skills, professional skills mainly. Nowadays, there are a lot of different trainings and uh, workshops for teachers, some programs that this or that institution offers. And there is a variety of affordable courses on FutureLearn or Coursera or any other platform. And not only, Cambridge offers a lot of interesting courses on future learn and you can also take a course from Cambridge Assessment if you're an English teacher or want uh, to be the one. So there are plenty of opportunities but we need to be really very selective because it's really easy to overwhelm your brain with a lot of information and input as we know doesn't equal output. Our intakes after doing this or that program can be different and it's important to have this wonderful time of self-reflection when we have a chance to first of all apply the skills, knowledge and practices that we acquired and make our conclusions, evaluate what was effective and what was not. And self-reflection is one of the most important things in any self-development process. Does self-development mean teacher training? Well, I'm afraid it's just the tip of an iceberg. During the recent years, professional development trainings and workshops became synonymous. However, trainings are just a small part of teacher development, which mainly focuses on how to teach. Whereas professional development aims to raise teachers' awareness of what to teach, how to teach, and why to teach in this or that context. As you know, all students are different and unique. It means that it requires a lot of adaptability from the side of a teacher. This is something what is really important for your self-development as well. Depending on the context where you teach, you will need and you will apply different strategies and different approaches. Even the same approach in different contexts can work in different ways. So you can see that it can be really very helpful in one context and it can be not as effective in another. And that's totally fine. And raising your awareness of efficacy and checking it in your practice is something what is really important in your professional development. All students are different and it's really important to create a healthy, friendly learning environment where your students will be able to acquire new skills, will feel safe and secure to share their ideas. Oftentimes it happens that when they come to the classroom they see this is the place where they can share some things that they can't share with other people. Understanding why, or in other words the rationale behind this or that teacher's decision made is one of the key aims of professional development for teachers. So what should effective professional development include? Based on my experience and the experience of my colleagues, I came up with eight components of effective professional development. Let's have a look at them and probably you can share in the comments down below something what I missed. First of all, Experimenting and risking. Experiment with new techniques and approaches in practical context. Seeing what works well and what doesn't. The second one, self-observation. In other words, video recording of the lesson. These days it became easier because we can record our sessions on Zoom and we can see what went well and what didn't. Which logically leads us to the third component, which is self-reflection. Self-reflection matters and it helps our development. It helps us to develop in our professional field and it helps us notice what we did well 
and what requires further improvement. Self-reflection can consist of professional diaries, self-reflection diaries, journals and portfolios where you can share your experience as well as feelings after your sessions. It will also help you think about your upcoming sessions and you will see that it will be easier to notice what you can improve. The first component is reading articles, journals and books related to your field. Something about methodology, some new articles in the field. Academia can be one of those sources that you can read. It can help you develop your analytical and uh, critical thinking. You can also watch some useful videos online. And after that, the most important thing is to write a short summary or think how you can apply it in your own context. The fifth component that I would like to highlight is collaborative work. I'm a big supporter of collaborative work and it refers to teaching as well. When we deal with the enhancement and the improvement, I think that it's impossible without uh, other people. And by saying this, I mean that when like-minded teachers gather together and discuss some particular matter, what they read, what they taught or what they saw, all these things can help and inspire them and eventually it can help them become better teachers. I'm also a big fan of peer observations. If you have a chance to observe your colleague, you can notice something positive as well as you can help your colleague to self-reflect and see what can be improved and how effective the session was. I'm lucky enough to meet on a weekly basis with my Delta peers and even after we finish the Delta program, we still keep in touch and we meet on a regular basis and we do it weekly. We had a chance to create our own podcasts about ELT and we recorded a lot of podcasts on different ELT topics. I will share the link to our Spotify podcast in the description down below so you will have a chance to check it and probably it will be helpful in your ELT journey. Number six, research. Conducting a research is something what is really important and you can use different data. You can use the articles as well as you can use more practical environment, for example, your classroom. No matter what research that you can conduct is something what brings you closer to new findings and when you work together, again, when you work together with your peers, you can see that you can enrich each other's findings and you can eventually come up with incredible results. So research matters and research helps you to broaden your horizons and become a better teacher. The seventh component of professional development is participating in international conferences and exchanging experience with different people. Such kind of environment helps you in different ways. First of all, it helps you find out some new information in your field. And secondly, you can also find interesting people, interesting teachers who probably teach in the same context like you and can share with you invaluable experience. And the last one, number eight, but I think that it should be number one, emotional intelligence and self-regulation. For every teacher, it's one of the most important things, we need to understand how to bring joy and happiness into the classroom, how to create this wonderful environment for learning and how to create a secure and safe environment for better learning. When feeling angry for a long period of time, the teacher can easily burn out. The teacher can behave in the wrong way with students can show anger, can become anxious, and there are many other consequences of bad self-regulation and uh, inability to control the feelings. In order to prevent it, I definitely recommend dedicating time to your physical and mental health. Emotional health goes hand in hand with our physical health. Going outside, enjoying the nature, having a stroll in the park and doing yoga, you know yourself better and you need to dedicate your time to your favorite activities. Your life is not only teaching. There are many other things that you need to devote and dedicate yourself to. Your hobbies, cooking, maybe walking in the park, doing sports, chatting with your friends, and something what helps you recharge your batteries matters. Doing sports, practicing yoga, spending time outside, nourish our positive thinking, 
and emotional stability. And help is our brain, which is really important. At the weekend, don't try to dedicate yourself fully and completely to self-development. Take your time in order to go outside, spend your time with your family and friends. It does matter, even if you're not tired and full of energy, at the end of the day, it's really important to not forget about something what you like, and it's not only teaching. If the teacher can regulate the emotions and is emotionally stable, it positively influences the overall learning experience that the teacher creates in the classroom. Your professional development can be formal or informal, but the most important thing is that it is self-initiated, that you personally wanted, not your institution, not another person or your head of studies, but you, you as a teacher, you as an educator, personally want to develop your skills. Teacher development is an ongoing and never-ending process, no matter which qualification you obtain, whether it is Delta or MA in linguistics, whether you have attended a really interesting and useful training or workshop, remain humble. Don't forget that you constantly develop your skills. It is important to remain humble and curious as a toddler. I wish you good luck and never lose your curiosity. Bye!